Frontier Ruckus is here on the Milo Show to perform a song called Visit Me off of their new album, End of the Kingdom. It's out February 17th, and they have a show February 18th at the Loving Touch. And I'm stoked. Here they go. Everyone's home in sweatpants for the series finale of their discontinued fall prime times. Meredith in Massachusetts with a colonial toothache and the leaves to rake are burning themselves so Detroit. <laughs> I'm 
at a loss to introduce you guys because you guys do so much. Um, <laughs> there's so much you could do. If you were to hand someone a business card right now, what would you even say? Well, it says our titles. <laughs> right, right. You guys, well, uh, Playground Detroit is uh, very already, already... multifaceted, yes. Yes. And I think one of the shorter terms we say is that we're a catalyst for emerging artists. We act as agents for them. We put on gallery exhibitions and produce events. But really our goal is to empower the artists and the creatives of the city, make them you know, better entrepreneurs, yeah. understand that they're their own brand, they're their own business, and yeah. attract talent and retain talent. Great. Or we just, we, we make shit happen, you know, basically. We get shit done. I love that. Um, <laughs> right, right below on the screen, we're gonna, we're gonna have the URL for Playground Detroit where people can go and explore and see Thank everything you. that you're up to. Uh, let's tell a story about how it got started five years ago. The idea came to you while the two of you were in New York. Can you tell us that story? Yeah, um, you know, I had, you know, we grew up in Detroit and I was living in New York for um, a long time mm -hmm. after I went to college there and came back and spent a few months here and then went back to New York. And after that, I was so excited to share um, what was happening here and all of my friends were always asking, like, what's up with Detroit? What's yeah. going on there? Yeah. Um, it was during the bankruptcy in 2012, right. so there was a lot of negative media, and it was just an idea to counteract um, all of that negativity because that's not what we saw here um, that was happening on the ground. So it was a big idea for a festival. I wanted to bring out Detroit artists and musicians and um, put them in a space in Brooklyn and show everybody in Brooklyn who was saying, like, you know, just like Brooklyn was where it's at. And it was right. really, actually, I was like, well, there's really amazing bands and there's so much cool stuff happening in Detroit. How do right. we show this to a larger audience? Um, so Samantha had moved out to um, New York and we connected back there and just started asking, you know, her, how can we put this together? Um, she, you know, had, went to CCS, so she mm -hmm. was really connected in terms of uh, a lot of the art scene. And I had worked with musicians in the past and managed people here. and. So, you know, we kind of just combined forces. The festival kind of got too big of an idea. We'd never thrown an event before. I'm not, we've never done event production. I'm a fashion designer um, by, by school and by profession. Yeah. So it, we had to kind of step back and, right. um, you know, realize, well, let's just not do a big thing and put everything in at once. And we can just spread it out over time and start doing smaller event activations. Pop-ups. Yeah, and we started our online magazine, which at the time was a blog, and that was just how we were starting to promote what we were doing. Okay, wow. Talk about that moment when you guys would come back here after being away in New York. Well, I think What's Paulina and I were both feeling a little frustrated in Brooklyn. It was a little oversaturated, right. and especially in terms of the arts, which is part of the reason we thought there was such an opportunity for, for Detroit creatives to really share their work there. And so when she moved back in 2014, I was working at a gallery in Chelsea, and um, it was grueling. I was working 12-hour days and not making very much money and working for somebody else's vision, which was an incredible experience. I literally could not be doing what we do today if I had not done that. But I realized that I really wanted to apply all that knowledge to what we had already started to build. And so there was a loft Paulina had been kind of living in and running an Airbnb out of. So as soon as I got back here, I realized that when one of the rooms was opening up, that was our opportunity to actually have a kind of semi-permanent space of our own. Great. So that became our proof of concept. It was right here in Corktown, and we kept that going for nine months. And we held a lot of exhibitions, concerts, screenings, and community events also, like a lot of meetings and stuff. And so the one main problem with that is that it was residential. It wasn't first floor. It was a bedroom. Right. Yeah, it was a bedroom. We even but had, we like, made a it look damn wall. good. It did look really, really great. Yeah. Still, every time Time you're in a space that isn't yours, there's restrictions, and you're on somebody else's timeline. Right. So right. we do that a lot. Yeah, but but through Motor City Match again, you know, we've been through three steps with them, where we've been through our business courses, we've found our landlord in our building, and now we're designing out the space, which is really, really incredible. So that's the news. You have a space. <laughs> you have a space now. Uh, it's on sort of the eastern east side of Eastern mm -hmm. Market. Yeah. Uh, tell us about. You guys are setting up the playground. Yeah, so it's uh, just outside of Easter Market, which mm -hmm. is cool. It's past the DeQuinder Cut, mm -hmm. and it's in a really awesome neighborhood, mm -hmm. main thoroughfare. Mm -hmm. 
between West Village and Easter Market. So, right. you know, it's it's in an area that is a little sleepy right now, but there's an incredible opportunity to activate it and make it a destination so that not just, you know, um, people that live in the area, but people who want to come visit and, you know, everybody can kind of just like, it's just another creative hub. I think it's right. so important in this city where everything's super spread out right. and people are just like trying to find opportunities to be together, right. um, to have another space that's not a bar or a coffee shop because, I don't know, it's just like when you take those out of the equation, it w there's not a lot of right. public spaces for people. Like, you know, every time that we've hosted an event, we've had, you know, upwards of 200 people usually who come through. Yeah. And it's just like everyone's like, a really cool eclectic mix. You know, there's people um, from all sorts of different kind of genres of, of cliques that hang out here that come together. Even like older people from the suburbs, mm -hmm. you know, they're really excited to find out what's happening here. Right. Um, so we try to, you know, do something for everyone. And it's really focused by the people that we're featuring. So whether it's um, a solo like featured exhibition for an artist or a band that we've paired or or even collaborated with some of the artists that we work with. It's um, always pretty collaborative. Yeah. Um, so this space is going to be, you know, used for our programming. It's going to be uh, having retail. So, you know, not just as a traditional gallery. Um, that's really not what the vision was in the beginning, but it's an amazing opportunity to help artists, you know, sell their work, show their work. Um, engage with the public and um, and then we'll have it for events too so it'll be like multi-functional right um, so as I said your business cards are really full because you guys do uh, so much um, there's your your creative agency event planning um, you have to you have to coordinate with artists you have to set up shows you have to do so much to me it sounds Stressful and exhausting. Yeah, it's a lot of energy to give to other people. Right. What do you love most about it? Because clearly you must. They're inspirational. Right. They are all brilliant, bright lights, yeah. and they're super colorful. It's really what like creates an exciting environment here. Yeah. Um, I grew up in the arts. Like my father is a visual artist. Mm -hmm. My mother is a gallery director. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that's just kind of like a lifeblood. I learned so much from them. And I think part of just growing up with my father being a teacher, it really actually kind of made me want to give the same way he gives and yeah. leads. Like we want to be encouraging. We oh. want to, you know, really like push people further. So yeah. um, it's, it's a two way street, definitely. Well, when you have people who are saying like, you know, literally you, you're helping my dreams come true or something like that. I mean. That's an addicting feeling, like to to really figure out like what people want to do and then help them connect the dots and make it happen. It seems it's just like the potential there is really exciting. And like, every time we have a show, yeah. you know, especially for a lot of the artists we work with for their solo like featured exhibitions, it's usually their first solo show. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, like exactly high top. She graduated from Cranbrook and the master's program and we give her first first solo exhibition. Right. And it's just cool because it's kind of like a, a little launch pad. Yeah. And for us, like it was always satellite. It was like we were the New York kind of satellite in or Detroit satellite in New York. And uh, now that we've kind of come back here, it's like I want to be a like a beacon out, you know. So February, March, April, May, the rest of the year, you're looking forward to what happens next? Oh, a lot of a lot. construction. <laughs> There's a lot of planning. Yeah. Um, hopefully we'll do some programming, at, you know, but really we've got to build the program for the next like, year and a half. We have a lot of ideas and a lot of plans. The timeline, especially with construction, it, it can kind of... Oh, it totally varies, yeah. So the goal the goal is um, summer, and, and I think that, you know, we'll, we'll try to stick to that. But in the Wonderful. meantime, we're working on it. In the meantime, congratulations for, for Thank you. getting funded and getting the playground. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for, so much. Thanks for being so damned encouraging. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. We're going to change our business cards just to say, is encourager so is a word? Damned kind of encouraging. So damn encouraging. Yep. Thanks, That's our guys. names. Thanks. Thanks. Playground Detroit. Right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. And cut. All right. Here on the Milo Show, we have Mike Phelps. Mike Phelps just put out an album, Grand Design Part 2, with producer DJ Cage. You can find it online. He's here to play a song called Pushing Keys.
I'm dropping taste like it's nothing, I'm stunting. I am the one and that's on the 100. Hope you can jump, cause I got this bitch jumping. Took all or nothing and made that shit something. The kush like a gospel is loud and there's something. No dubs on my verse, I don't keep this bitch running. These rappers, these rappers, these rappers, these rappers, these rappers below me. The girl wanna blow me. Send innovations everywhere like Kobe. I only pet you to blunt if you my homie. I feel like pots on the Mac Macaroni. I'm hard as a rock, all these rappers jabronis. My mix they be slapping all night like the Coney. I roll up a hill, but don't pass it to Stoney. She only smoke joints, she roll up a new Stokey. Pass it to Loki, man, Loki the homie. My pen like a chopper, I keep that bitch on me. I cannot be trained, you can't control me. You know my name, but that don't mean you know me. They tell me the top is somewhere to get lonely. I tell them the top is somewhere to get money. I ain't get on fast, I did it slowly. Cool, cause I ain't trying to end up like Tony Montana, Montana the whip that we used to drive in, trying to make it to work at the palace, now I didn't put in so much work that they gon' have to do all of my new shows at the palace, my brother's a pusher, I had no malice, spitting these clips such a skill check to balance, I am the king and my queen and my chalice, I used to do battles with she forget Chavez, now I do battles with cheese and the cabbage it's autumn cause I put the leaves in the package my people know me cause I'm real as it gets hard as a metal, I'm selling this bitch and I'm selling this bitch like I'm feeling this bitch just be real in this bitch, is you feeling this shit? you ain't feeling this shit, you your feelings and shit, I ain't Feeling that shit, I got millions to get. Oh, I be pushing keys, I be pushing keys. Moving dope through the piano, ooh, I'm pushing keys. I be pushing keys, ooh, I be pushing keys. Moving dope through the piano, yeah, I'm pushing keys, yeah, I'm pushing keys, ooh, yeah, I'm pushing keys. Moving dope through the piano, ooh, I'm pushing keys, I'm pushing keys, oh yeah, I'm pushing keys. Moving dope through the piano, I'm pushing keys. Spit a verse, make another rapper hit spin. It's a dead end, I'm a head in with my brethren. Blunt with me all the time, like a best friend. Grind till it's red, bands of a red lens with a lead in. Chop a rhyme like it's kind of bind with my cocky behind. Nigga gotta grind till I'm out of time. Niggas out of line, but then out of time. Drop a rhyme that I make a motherfucker stop and then apologize. Give me space, astrologize. It ain't a game, but you know I'm gonna monopolize. You can see it in my mama's eyes. So when the drama rise, I'm a ride. Niggas throwing salt, but I got the fries. What the fuck they tryna do with a nigga? I put the two in the switcher, then put the juice in the liquor with all these people talking shit. But look at you in the mirror What all this dope up in the bit And we ain't new to the dealer Homie, what you say about me? I don't really give a fuck Only live once So I live it up Get my digits up Till I'm in a truck Travel around the world Let my pivot up Give it up They ain't wanna see a nigga win Try to see him in a pen Try to see him with a pen No, no, cause it's so dope It's a promo It's an old flow Riding dough low For my old hoe She a old ho. I'm a faux fo With the gold flow Mike felt so gold Every motherfucker wanna throw low blows Girls wanna let a nigga hop on Like a pogo By the bow low With the wolf flow Go, go In my bow, bro I so low Purple on deck Like slow, bro and slow, bro. What's purple? If you ain't no bro, ho, no. Everyone did it, but nobody do it the way that I done it. Two fifties on me, man. I keep it one hundred. Two fifties on me, man. I'm chief and I'm blunting. Got people who ride and I'm riding along. Yo, girl, ride my dick while I'm writing a song. I got money to make and I'm making that shit. If you got more than me, then I'm taking that shit. Record you talking, I'm breaking that shit. Hennessy pouring, I'm drinking that shit. If I'm smoking a blunt, then it's thinking that bitch got reality weed. I be facing that shit. Life is a test and I'm facing that shit. Then I don't got no time or no patience and shit. For people who be hating that shit. Yeah, homie, they be hating that shit. They hate my shit. Do secrets in the room, make the mood change, I'm feeling like normal is a new strange, I fucked a lot of women and a few came, the rest didn't, who would you blame, life is just a fire, I'm a new flame, sweatpants, no shirt, I'm Luke Kane, I love talking about pussy like the new Wayne, I just need two planes like two chains, or a diddy helicopter with a new range, maybe they didn't listen to me cause I'm too plain, people slaves, looking for a new chain, new woods for the horses I ain't through, man, spit the shit cause it just ain't got a clue, man, put on my suit and run my city like I'm Bruce Wayne, couple Lucy's and a quarter call a loose change, I am a new six that just with a new same, I'm pushing keys, oh yeah, I'm pushing keys. Moving dope through the piano, ooh, I'm pushing keys. I be pushing keys, yeah, I be pushing keys. Moving dope through the piano, ooh, 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 ooh. I'm pushing keys, oh yeah, I'm pushing keys. Moving dope through the piano, ooh, I'm pushing keys. I be pushing keys, oh yeah, I'm pushing keys. Moving dope through the piano, ooh, I'm pushing keys.
pushing keys. I'm pushing keys. I'm pushing keys. Oh, window. Oh, I'm pushing keys. Time's ticking, the world turns. Oil fields, oil spills. The world cries. Hey, Woodman. What? Hey, Jeff. Hey, man. Oh, thanks for having me. Of course, Frank Woodman is on my show. Ooh. Hey, guys. Frank Woodman of Detroit uh, Rock and Rollers. Frank Woodman, the lead singer and guitarist of Caveman Woodman and Bam Bam Moss. Correct. Uh, Brandon Moss, the drummer in that duo. It's a, a two-piece in the vein of Genesis and. Uh, and uh, Dream Theater. But Phil Collins, not, not Peter Gabriel Genesis. We're talking the I Can't Walk. No, I can't definitely do. make up Peter Gabriel. All right, all right. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, sure. Uh, we'll talk about your band, but um, coming up in a couple months, you've got a t shirt Fuck on. My band. Got a t shirt on right now yeah, that says. Let's talk about the Hamtramck Music Festival. It's always going to be the first weekend of March, so I'm not going to give you any dates. You guys got the little things to look that shit up. Right. It's so uh, always the first weekend of March, Jeff. This is the fourth fourth year for the Hamtramck Music four. Festival. We're on number four, yeah. It's a magical year. Friday and Saturday, the first Friday and Saturday of March, it will kick off the first Thursday. Correct. At Planet Ant. This is Planet, all true. At Planet Ant Hall that they took over across the street from first, that theater. Yep, first year there. Uh, we The Foling Warehouse did us good, but right. we've moved deeper into Hamtramck. The, yeah. Uh, uh, the hall is amazing. Mm -hmm. They've... Uh, Plan Ant people bought this bigger hall, and it's going to be the focus of the festival this year. That's great. That's great. Uh, I was talking to, because this is, we should say, a grassroots effort. There's more than 20, if not 30 people working everything. I've said You've it got, a thousand times. It's uh, the inmates running the asylum is what's going on here. You've taken over the city and thrown your own music festival. Kind of have. We kind of took it back. Uh, it's a bunch of musicians like myself. Nobody's making a dime. We're all volunteering. We're all hung over at the meetings. Uh, we have donuts, cookies, mm -hmm. and uh, we're all rock and roll. Well, I'm not gonna say rock and roll. We're music lovers, right? And community lovers, and we wanted this great festival of blowout to come forth into the new era. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know what I just said. The Metro Times blowout happening from the late 90s until the late 2010s <coughs> when it was disrupted and, and dispersed and attended everyone. Uh, I don't care who endorsed it or not. The music was there. Right, right, Music right. Was there. Hamtramck Blog started in 2013, and it's been, I would say, for all intents and purposes, successful and yeah. joyous and, and great each year. We've had, uh, you know, people show up in icy climates, uh, shivering together, walking icy sidewalks to see their favorite band, mm -hmm. or see a new band they've never seen before. Mm -hmm. uh, Hamtramck is perfect for it. The, the, the time is perfect for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we, we took back Blowout, and uh, it's now the Hamtramck Music Festival. Right. It's golden. So it's all about celebrating that city. It's all about celebrating all the businesses there. It's sort of a... a everyone's kind of giving a gift to each other. You're going to give a gift to folks when you book bands into your I like venue. That. I like that, yeah. You've got the Paychecks Lounge as your assigned venue. Page, You're a booker. Paychecks Lounge. Uh, Right now it's the Paycheck Lounge. Uh, there might be new owners, there might be weirdness going on, but yeah, well, stay as, tuned. Of, as of right now, it's the Paychecks, but it could be, and I'll just throw this out first. The address will say If safe. the Paychecks doesn't work out, we're taking over the lounge at the Planet Ant Hall. If okay. you notice booking, there hasn't been the lounge talk yet. All right. If there's a failure with, with owners, we're moving over there, and it's going to be a clusterfuck of craziness. I want lounge talk to be the title of this episode. All right, all right. Well, uh, there will be 20 venues, and someone's going to volunteer to help book each of those venues and yeah. put four bands into each venue at each night. Well, what, yeah, well, you're talking eight bands over uh, Over 160 over bands. And what we're doing, too, uh, Jeff, is we're, like, bringing in new people. We okay. got uh, people come and go. We, we encourage more people to come out. You want to you want book a venue? Come talk to any of us it and say, happen. I want to book a venue next year. Mm -hmm. We're trying to keep it fresh. All right. So we've got new faces this year. We have rules. You can't book the same venue two years in a row. All right. Uh, 
We have rules. You've got to pick four from the pool and four people that you personally want. Because hundreds of bands have submitted. We're at 460 right now. Amazing. Detroit. It's crazy. Hamtramck. It's crazy. Ferndale. The whole While area. While we're here, I want to shout out to our, our fearless leader, and he does a lot more work than I do, so I want to shout out Eugene Stroh. Yes. I love you, Eugene. Yes. Uh, he's kind of the glue that keeps us together. Right. I mean, he's a pretty organized fella. Mm -hmm. And a great musician who's been around this town a long time, so shout out to Eugene. Let's also talk about your band, Caveman Woodman. Okay. Uh, you recorded an album. It's called Early Man. Early Man. It might be coming out pretty soon. Uh, but just tell me about the record. Tell me about how you feel. Tell me All about right. the song. I'm and... super proud as a 50-some-year-old guy. This could be my first album. Mm -hmm. um, it's coming out the spring of 2017. Uh, it was supposed to come out in 2016, but the uh, music gods or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. Deem that year not to be appropriate for the Caveman record. Wasn't a good year for music. That's, I mean, I mean, that's the saving grace for the delays for me. Right. It's like, you know what? Maybe it wasn't meant to come out in 2016. Sure, sure, sure. So I have 11 cuts. It's a half hour long. It's in the style of Ramones. It's bam, 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 bam. Brandon Moss on the kit is ridiculous. I, I listen to the record myself, just listening to the fucking drums. I right. Mean, they, it's outrageous. Looking spring release 2017. Fast, punky, scuzzy. I, I don't have a, a softy on there. There's no, no uh, there's no slow dance song. I mean, on you there. are a softy. I am totally a softy. You're, you're, you know, I, you got a soft I, I, you know, on a stage. I, I probably hug too much, maybe. That's okay. You know, maybe. Mm. I maybe. love it. No, when it comes to the rock and roll, I just think of my attention span, and, and, and I think most people too. It's just, I just want, I want that. You know, electricity. I was like, oh yeah. Your beard. Oh, that, that's exciting to me. Yeah, I always think of the Sonics. There was yeah. always like two minutes, two oh, minutes, man. fifteen seconds. You Boss hog in De and out. Definitely in there, man. Yeah. Like, Moan, Sonics, mm -hmm. all that early rock and roll shit, man. I've been wanting to have Frank on this show for a while. Um, Thank you. John. You're like the spirit animal of Detroit music. Well, <laughs> I feel like I'm a, a kid in a candy store, literally, mm. and. Uh, I'd like to thank all the Detroit rock and rolls that put up with me, let me into your party, and, oh, come uh, on. and break some dishes. <laughs> <laughs> so, look for Early Man. Early from Man. Caveman later. Cave, caveman, we, we shortened our shit up a little bit to make it good for okay. uh, posters and shit. Sure. It's Caveman and Bam Bam. I like that. Caveman, Bam Bam, Early Man. Uh, early Adam spring. Cox recorded it in Ham Hamtramck. Yeah. And he did a, an amazing job. We literally cut eight songs in like four days, and uh, yeah, no bullshit. We just no, set up no and let it rip. Yeah, let it rip. It's, it's, a, it's a fine are, rock record. Are you gonna? Don't want to. No spoilers. Are you gonna play during Hamtramck Music Festival? Do you oh, want to? Uh, is your band in the hat? It's the only reason I do it. No, all right, I'm kidding, all right. I'm no. Uh, one of the perks. Oh, there goes my class. That's okay. Uh, we are definitely gonna play. Uh, we're definitely gonna play when you, right. you have the choice of. Booking your own band when you set up a venue, of you course can. I'm gonna have to make me play it. Find it online at their Facebook, Hamtramck Music we Festival. Got, we got a killer lineup. I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat right now. Oh. The deadline is Sunday. We got bars of gold. We got golden torso. It's ridiculous. We got the walking beat. Do you guys like the Kinks? I Come like on. the Kinks. The and I like the walking the beat. The lineup's amazing. I love the walking beat. We have Shelly. What else do we have? We have um, we have AM people. Oh yeah, great freaking punk indie rock band. I'm really proud of my lineup. All right, that's it. That's the Milo show episode 15. Stay tuned. Thank you. Oh, buddy, I love you. Yeah, dog. I'm ready, dog. I'm gonna take one and go. <laughs> the entire song, I had a large amount of beer in my mouth. I couldn't sing. Do you want to do one more take? No. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, your mojo. It's all good. <laughs>
I just fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry.